Will Tennessee welcome Oklahoma into the SEC? Does Mississippi State get Billy Napier fired? Will Ole Miss ever play someone that isn't a high school team? Time to get the SEC squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome into our SEC squad edition, getting you set for week four in the SEC. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 to get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com today to get started. Welcome into the SEC squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage. Join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the SEC. And let's welcome in our panelists this week. We got Stephen Willis, host of Locked On Ole Miss, John Miller, host of Locked On Mizzou, Jonathan Davis, host of Locked On Longhorns, Luke Robinson, Locked On Bama, Eric Kane, Locked On Vols, and Chris Marler, Locked On Gamecocks. And fellas, I look around, I see a lot of uh, top 10 teams in the country right now. Marler, South Carolina gave it a valiant effort. They, you know, the refs have been a little bit. Hold on, Gordy. I think they just got flagged for me being here on the show. Just right yeah. now, right? There was another flag, another kick six, or, or pick six has been overturned because of me just being on the show. Yeah, it's it was a tough go. But look, South Carolina, I think they're still good, and they're going to upset somebody. They're not supposed to beat this season. But, but guys, let's jump into it. Let's open it up. I'm going to jump to each of you. Just make a prediction about your team this week. Doesn't have to be about the game necessarily or the score, but just give me a prediction for your team. Steven, let's start with Ole Miss. Um, the prediction is Henry Parrish is probably going to go off. Georgia Southern played against Boise State and gave up a 260 yards to Genty. The backup running back had 112 yards running in that game. They give up nearly 400 yards for the day. Henry Parrish is going to go off. Matt Jones is going to go off. And Ole Miss has outscored their opponents this year, what, 168 to 9? That's going to go up. Jaquindon Jackson and Dylan Sampson kind of battling it out for leading rusher in the SEC. Henry Parrish right behind them, not far back. John Miller, give me a prediction for Mizzou. Well, last season, Brady Cook against Vanderbilt had probably his best game of the season. Missouri's been just a little bit off on their deep passing so far. I think this is the week it finally clicks and the Tigers get some deep shots to come through against the Commodores. Yeah, that Luther Burden guy, pretty damn good last week, 100 yards. Jonathan Davis, how about a prediction for the Longhorns? And uh, is it about Arch Manning? Please say it's about Arch Manning. It is about Arch Manning. Come on now. I've been doing this for two years. I know you know, I don't want to bury the lead, but, you know, when you look at it, ULM, obviously Louisiana Monroe, the opponent doesn't bring a lot of excitement, but everybody's going to be watching America's favorite quarterback, Arch Manning, and what likely will be uh, his first start with Quinn Ewers dealing with that oblique strain. I'm going to say Arch Manning goes off. Another five-plus touchdowns, 300-plus yards, and the biggest story in college football next week is the quarterback controversy at the University of Texas. Yeah, when you said America's favorite quarterback, I thought you meant on ULM side, General Booty. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, the best name in college sports for sure. <laughs> a Manning versus a Booty? It doesn't get any better than that. Uh, Luke Robinson, give me a prediction for Alabama. Didn't the Manning already face off against a Booty back at Tennessee and it caused a bunch of problems? I, I, um, well, my predictions are uh, that I'm going to eat 100% fewer cheese curds than I did last week. That was, uh, that, that was a lot. Uh, in Wisconsin, that's they have that for breakfast. Uh, but you know, kudos to them. I love seeing the uh, atmosphere, and it was a lot of fun. And I'm just going to take a break this week and just try and absorb some of these other SEC games for a while. Yeah, the uh, the 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 uh, Wisconsin Badger fans uh, or players, they look like they ate a bunch of cheese curds. They were so <laughs> slow out there. The slow ten up there, at Alabama making a rough shot at them. Eric Kane, give me a prediction for the Vols this week. Well, first of all, hat tip to you, Luke. That was a, that was a pretty good one. Uh, job well done there. Um, all eyes, college football is going to be on Tennessee and Oklahoma. Uh, you know, biggest game in the country. I know Michigan's playing Southern Cal, but, you know, Michigan's not very good in my opinion. So, um, Dylan Sampson, you know, I, I don't want to say jumping in the Heisman conversation because I think that's a bit steep, but, I think a lot more people nationally are going to be talking about not just Nico Iamaliava, but Dylan Sampson, the running back from Tennessee, Chris, that you just referenced moments ago. 
Yeah, it's a good it's a good uh, angle there because everybody was talking Nico in the Heisman, and it might yeah. just be the running back there. Uh, Marler, the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks, a bounce back spot here, four touchdown favorite against Akron. But will Lenora Sellers play? Will it be Robbie Ashford? Just whatever it is, get a win. First and foremost, I mean Eric's right about the the all eyes being on uh, Tennessee and Oklahoma, even though they announced earlier today that Michigan's going to start orgy, so it'll be the first time. In a while, all eyes will not be on Orgy and said they will They're be going to start what now? That. Um, that being said, listen, here's the thing. Lenore Sellers, they said today, everyone assumed he's not playing. A- everyone with a brain assumed he's not playing. Shane Beamer comes out today and says, you know what? He's going to play. He's going to be full go. Like, everything should be fine. And there's this team at uh, Akron presents problems. That better have been coach speak because this is one of the worst teams in the country. They have not won more than two games in a season since 2018, and that's when they won four. So it better be coach speak. They better cover the spread, not just for my gambling, because, I, you know, they, they need to save some face after last week. I just got flagged again, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we, we've talked a lot of, uh, man, already on the show, we've hit on an orgy, a booty, and uh, who knows where this show is going to go. But um, it's interesting, guys, and uh, Luke's right. I completely – brain fart slip that Alabama's got a bye week. Georgia's got a bye week. Got teams already in a bye week. We just started the freaking season, but uh, thus the new longer schedule and, and what it brings. Um, guys, just looking around the league right now, some big picture stuff I just wanted to touch on, but uh, raise your hand if you're shocked Billy Napier is still employed at Florida right now. Yeah, about half the group. Um, pretty crazy. I mean, I don't know. Does the things continue to get worse here for Florida? They, I don't know how they get better. I think if um, Billy Napier gets a win against Mississippi State, which if you looked at them last week against Toledo, that is very possible. This is a bad, bad football. Like Vandy might put 40 on Mississippi State this year. No, I'm with you, Stephen. It's it's going to get it's going to get ugly here. And and look, the, we're, they're already betting odds on who F- Georgia's or Florida's next head coach are going to be is going to be like the guy's not even fired yet. But all Congrats, the be- Stephen, it's all out there already. And Congrats, of course, buddy. It's Lane Kiffin's name getting thrown out there again, Stephen. Oh, Go Lane, figure. L- Lane Kiffin is not going to Florida. He's just not. But and Eli Drinkwitz isn't either, but I'll take yeah. all those hits I can get. Yes, yeah, like Stephen. Yes, we'll yeah, give, yes, all, give me all the page all views. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, know, it, it, you guys are about to make money regardless of what happens. So There yeah. was Good very randomly a Florida fan in Wisconsin for no reason that went to the game. Like He kept sort of in a ghostly <laughs> fashion following us around. We kept seeing him. He had all this Florida stuff on. And he's, you know, said, yeah, I do know a couple of folks that know a couple of folks. Everybody says it, right? He is 100% convinced Lane Kiffin right now would go to Florida and, and will go to Florida. So, you know, I, again, I'm, every I'm just telling you, I know what you're saying, and I'm, you yeah. might be right. And it is a very, I think it's a very good question. Is the Florida job better than Ole Miss right now? Historically, certainly yes. Right now, I don't know. Yeah. I think the the big, the main thing with Florida that, that no one seems to be talking about, which is Napier, if he needs to go, he needs to go. But if he goes, you clean house completely because there's no chance in hell they can have Scott Strickland be in charge of, of another hire with how bad he's been the last several years. Because I think he's made six total hires like in the athletic department and you talk about all the different sports. Only one has a winning record against SEC teams, and it's the, it's the basketball coach. Two of them have already been fired for – I think it was abuse has been said on Twitter. I didn't read too much into it, but of course it's Twitter. So, you know, it's real, but like you cannot let Scott Strickland make another hire and have him be in charge of it. Cause it's so bad. And let's, let's be real about something on this. Everybody talks about how great of a job Florida is and how much money they have and all of this stuff. Where has this money been? This it, is their third straight quarter, their third straight coach. That's going to go three and out. Uh, they're Jade Rashada to where you made promises and could not pay the bills. Where is all this money? I mean, I, I, just, I just don't see it. And Lane Kiffin yeah, right now is the point. Yeah. And that's a great point because people, uh, I think, assume Florida with the resources. And by resources, you mean the high schools in that area, the, the mm-hmm. talent that's so close. But now with NIL, it doesn't matter. I mean, USC just went into Florida and got Ty Jackson out of nowhere. He wasn't even really considering them. Goes on a visit. The next thing you know, he comes out and goes, boy, I do I love me some Southern Cal. And that sort of came out of meaning, you know, the NIL is going to play such a big deal in here. It's going to really affect the the location lure that it used to be for somebody in Florida. So I think you're absolutely right there. And that's why I'm saying it is a legit question if – Florida is still a better job than Ole Miss at the moment. 
And the thing is, the question is not really, is is Florida or Ole Miss a better job? The question is, is it a better, is it a good career move for, yeah. for Lane Kiffin to move Ole Miss where he's already got it rolling, he controls everything, to then go to Florida where he'll be, he'll be on the hot seat within 18 weeks or something? Yeah, you How go is eight that a smart four, career move? He goes eight and four at Ole Miss next year. They'll go, man, it sucks, but all right, we'll get him next time. He exactly. does that in Florida. It's going to be like, come on, man. We thought you were going to come win titles here. So certainly going to be interesting to see. All right, guys, we got plenty more to discuss. We're going to get into some of the games. Let's dive deeper into Tennessee and Oklahoma. Can Florida beat Mississippi State? The SEC squad talking all, more ball next. Back to the squad here in just a second, but I want to remind you guys, today's episode is presented to you by friends over at FanDuel. And look, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book and got a little something different going for you right now. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And then, of course, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just got to go visit FanDuel.com. Take advantage of that great offer. Again, bet $5, get a three-week free trial, that NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And, of course, take advantage of some of the great betting lines they got up there. They got all the biggest SEC games each and every week. If you like uh, Florida to cover the six on the road at Mississippi State, they got that right now. If you like Auburn minus the three at home against Arkansas, you can make that bet as well. It's all up there right now at FanDuel.com. Of course, download the app and take advantage of FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. This episode also presented to you by our friends over at Roy. And if you have not heard about Roy yet, it stands for Return on You. And it's a new platform that lets you, the fans, get involved in NIL like never before by making contributions directly to your favorite athletes and by supporting players directly you can help shape rosters retain talent keep your favorite players out of the transfer portal and as you know nil has changed the game for athletes roy is changing the nil game for fans no risk contributions fans contributions are securely held and are only distributed if the athlete makes the decision that aligns with the fan support if not the money will be returned to the fan. And by using Roy, fans not only support athletes financially, but also become part of their name, image, and likeness journey. Go download Roy for iOS or Android, enter referral code locked on, and you will automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for additional details. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. SEC squad roll along here, guys. Let's get into a preview and some of the matchup this week matchups this weekend. Let's start with the big one where everybody, the focus of the country is on college game day, heading to Norman for the first time in quite a while. And uh, it'll be the Tennessee Vols up there. And we all know Josh Heupel, of course, had great success as a player at Oklahoma. Very revered there. He's been de- trying to downplay this ain't about me. It's about the team and all this kind of stuff. But Eric, Start with your Vols. They seem pretty focused and a team on a mission so far. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Tennessee's looked really good the first couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, NC State turns out wasn't really much of a challenge. And, you know, we'll see if they, you know, turn into anything offensively. But right now, it's not a very good football team. So Tennessee's played three pretty bad football teams. And this is obviously going to be a huge challenge. Um, having said all that, I mean, the defense has still been much better than I thought it would be. Defensive line continues to look like one of the best groups in the country. Explosive plays are back offensively. Um, and Tennessee's run game, as I mentioned a moment ago, has been second to none. So, um, yeah, playing with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, should be playing with a lot of confidence. And you look at Oklahoma and some of the struggles and certainly the injuries the Sooners have been dealing with on the offensive side of the football. It's easy to see why Tennessee's kind of a trending pick here this week. But got to go on the road. Got to got to control the elements. And that's something that Tennessee has not done well in recent years. Uh, you know, Georgia 22, South Carolina 22, Florida last year, Missouri last year. Um, it's going to be up to Nico and, and this staff to kind of change that narrative and a, a big test here in the early going. Anybody think Oklahoma, we see their best shot? Like, I mean, this defense has played well, just the offense has not been great. Like, but do we see like a motivated bunch? Do we see Oklahoma come out? Keep in mind, they, ha- they haven't had their full complement of receivers and offensive line since like Nick, uh, what, Nick's coming back this week. Nick, so we'll see. I, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. And I know, of course, yeah. like I'm the Texas fan. So it's like, 
of course he doesn't see Oklahoma, but just when you look at this offense, I mean, they really haven't played anybody and they've just struggled mightily. Like Jackson Arnold still yet to throw for over 200 yards this season. Only one wide receiver over 100 yards, no running back over 150 yards. No run yeah, game they, at all. Jackson yeah, Arnold exactly. is, just, is the only runner, yeah. Exactly. Completely replacing that offensive line. And when you look at it, their defense has been good, but it hasn't necessarily been elite, right? They, you know, Houston was in the game the entire time. Uh, Donovan Smith threw for 260 yards. They gave up 19 points to Tulane, where I think Tennessee has only given up 13 points on the entire season, right? So I think both defenses will play well in this game. But who do I trust more, Tennessee's offense against Oklahoma's defense or Oklahoma's offense against Tennessee's defense, where Oklahoma's offense has not looked good at all at any point throughout mm -hmm. this season? Tex I mean, Tennessee is favored by a touchdown. I think they win by a touchdown or more, even on the mm -hmm. road in Norman. They, I think Tennessee this, I think this is, could is the be best a trap. In the country right now. Like I, I don't I don't like I hate to say it, Eric. I like I, especially now that I know that you're like 12 years old and missed the entire <laughs> 90s, which was the worst time to ever be opposed to a Tennessee team. Yeah, they were incredible then. Like it just I, like, but I hate to say it, but you watch this team, and sure, Josh Heupel's a bit of a jerk for onside kicking up 30 points against against whoever or, to, or not Toledo, but whoever Kent they State. State from a week ago. But you look at how they're operating. Like Nico was the lowest rated quarterback in the in the conference last week on like PFF quarterback grades, which you know take that with a grain of salt if you want. And they were still up like sixty five nothing at the half. Like Oklahoma's been bad offensively. I don't I don't think this one's close. I think this game could be a Brent Venables wheelhouse type game. He's going to muck it up. He's going to play mm -hmm. slow. He's going to play defense and try and win a 17 to 14 game. I think that is his wheelhouse and that is his way forward. I just don't know that Oklahoma can do it because Tennessee's yeah. offense is just ridiculous right now. Well, and you can muck it up a little bit, but you've mm -hmm. got to be able to score a lot of points. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not sure Oklahoma can do that. I think, uh, P. Diddy will win Humanitarian of the Year before Oklahoma beats Tennessee this weekend. Jesus. You know what? This national game of the week, quite possibly, this is actually my pick of the week. As long as you can get it less than a touchdown, I will yeah. give the six and a half with Tennessee. Wow. Well, well you know the, what? The, the road numbers are kind of scary from what Eric brought up. I will say that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, was just I, saying, I think it's a little bit like Michigan against uh, against Texas, where I mm -hmm. think they were getting a lot of credit for their name and last seat and last season. I think that's a little bit what's happening with Oklahoma right now. Well, let me paint a picture, though, for you. All the talk of Hypo coming back and the the beloved quarterback. What if Nico has his first terrible game of the year? What if he throws two interceptions, a pick six like that, that's honestly what Oklahoma's going to need. You got Danny Stutzman. You got Billy Bowman. You got some great defensive players. They're going to need. You know, kind of what I'm looking at the NFL a week ago, what the Bears did to uh, Will Levis. Like, you're going to need a special teams touchdown. You're going to need a pick six. Like, but it's not crazy to think. But no, I don't know. I think that crowd's going to be hyped. I mean, it's look, the Big 12 is already sending messages to Oklahoma. Don't mess this up, guys. You, you, you're, you know, you left us for that. Don't lose your first SEC game. It's well, I think the run game for Tennessee and Dylan Sampson so important in this game. Like, all I was going to be on Nico. This is truly Nico's. I mean, yeah, he started in the Citrus Bowl last year against an Iowa defense that was pretty, you know, pretty good. And that was a big time test, and he he passed. You know, this year, I mean, NC State, sure, but I mean, this is his first huge test, right? Going on the road, hostile environment, something he's never done. All eyes, you know, are going to be on him. You know, Dylan Sampson's ability to run the football behind that veteran offensive line. Tennessee has averaged 200 yards on the ground a game since Josh Hopple's been here. Take some pressure off Nico, and and you know he doesn't have to hit a, a deep ball to get settled in or something. You can rely on that run game, and then just kind of go and play your ball. And um, I I know you know Brent Venables is going to try to muck it up and, and slow things down, it, but if Tennessee can run the ball, you know, and rely on that run game all week all, all game long, I don't think that matters because I think the play action and RPO is going to come off that run game. It's just going to be really good for Tennessee. The way yeah. you know. A 60-minute football game, you know, I want to say, like, it's a 60-minute football game, and, you know, you know, Brent Venables couldn't muck it up early, right? It could be a close game early, yeah. you know, going into the half. But this Oklahoma offense, you're not going to convince me that after three straight, straight weeks of struggling, they take such a big step up in competition and then magically just put it all together. You know what I mean? Like, they're just not going to be able to outscore this Tennessee offense in a 60-minute football game. They keep it close going into halftime, but Tennessee eventually pulls away. Like I said, you know, like John Miller said, I love Tennessee by six and a half, a touchdown, whatever. I'm not going to say it's not close, you know, like Marler said, but I do think Tennessee goes in there and wins fairly convincingly. You know, I think the way the clock is now, 
uh, I know at the Alabama Wisconsin game, we looked up and there was like a minute left in the first quarter, and we're like, "What in the world?" I mean, this you know, some teams can make it. I mean, can make it where the clock just disappears on you. And I think Oklahoma will try to do that. I think they really will, and I think they may be successful for a little bit. But what's going to happen is a lot like what happened in the Wisconsin game, where eventually somebody's going to get loose. It's going to be a big play, and you're going to be two scores down, and you're like, "Okay, now we can't do this clock thing anymore. We got to come back." And and that's when you get into a trap and it starts rolling downhill. Yeah, and one thing, it, Oklahoma, we've told them for two years that y'all better handle the offensive line before y'all come into the right. SEC. Not handling the offensive line and going against Tennessee's defensive line, that is a bold strategy, and we'll see if it yeah, that's, pays off. You're exactly right. Again, starting center, high ankle sprain. He's been out since week one. Will he come back? I don't know. Left guard's out for the year. Right tackle, probably doubtful. Like You're already replacing five starters from a year ago. Three guys have had extensive injuries already three games in, and then you're going up against a, a defensive line. You guys have heard me say it every week. I mean, they literally go 14 deep across the front. It's not fair. I think that's going to be just a huge hey, point in this game. I don't feel sorry for him at all. And and John Miller, I think, will back me up on this, but when Missouri came into this, this league in 2012, they lost all five starting offensive linemen before the start of the season, including their sixth guy. You had coaches going around on, on golf carts on campus looking for bodies to put into practice, and then they go, they go what, five and seven, and everyone, you got Georgia – and Aaron Murray and him holding up signs to grown man football and stuff like that after you beat him. Like, I don't feel sorry for Oklahoma whatsoever. You had before when Spencer right Rattler was at Oklahoma, when he transferred to South Carolina, they had 11 four-star offensive linemen or higher coming out of high school. They had four, 11 players that were ranked four-star or higher coming out of high school. And now it, it's it's just all gone. Like, like, you knew what you had to prepare for. This wasn't like a, a pop quiz that you woke up on on, on August 31st and mm -hmm. just woke up to. Like You knew exactly what you were walking into. Your fans definitely did because they talked about it all offseason. So welcome to the party, man. Yeah. Texas took it seriously. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Can, they took it seriously. I hate it. <laughs> well, the, the only worse name uh, for an offensive lineman than Branson Hickman is probably Wilkin Formby. But let's uh, <laughs> let's get to it. Terrible, Coming man. up next, guys, which team wins between Auburn and Arkansas? Anyone on upset alert? The SEC squad talking more ball next. Back to the squad here in just a second, but first, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. The new Game Time app has a feature called Game Time Picks and makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks. It's going to filter out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And what's great about the Game Time app, with the Game Time Picks option, curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever it is. I love the all-in pricing feature. You toggle that feature on. It shows your total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. That's the price you're going to pay. Seat views. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, so you know what to expect before you even get to the stadium. Lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Go download the game time app, create an account, use our code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account, redeem our code locked on college for $20 off download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. Final segment with our SEC squad, and we welcome in Brandon Olson. He wanted to get in here because we hadn't talked about Florida, Mississippi State yet. So, Brandon, I'll, I'll give you the floor for just a second. As Billy Napier, the redemption tour begins this week with a win at Mississippi State, right? I hope so, but I will say this. I called this last week. I said, Toledo, the school that I went to, is going to beat Mississippi State. And Florida, the school that I cover – just might lose and that would be the most uh painful possible outcome it's it's tough in Gainesville right now um morale is not high we'll, we'll say that right now. <laughs> at least in the fan base morale is not are you high. surprised he wasn't fired sunday for real honestly yes um I, I was told by some people that there was a general feeling prior to that game that the next loss would be his last. I mean, I, I, I cover Tennessee. I'm not pretending to be an insider for Gainesville for Florida right now, but I, I was told Tuesday of that week, like, hey, if it gets ugly this week against AM, like Sunday, there's a real chance he could be fired. And then when they called that meeting Sunday morning, I'm like, well, I mean, it's happening, right? Whoa, was I, I, was kind of I mean, 13 point loss. Let's see how low we can go. Well, look, you can't know how to dig yourself out of rock bottom until you truly hit rock bottom. And I need, what, what was the quote he said? Scared money don't make money. 
Let's keep gambling on Billy. I love He's it. He's never allowed to say that for as long as he lives. Ever. <laughs> Ever Brandon, I, Brandon yeah. I got a question for you. I'm kind of leaning toward Mississippi State this week, just on a, you know, go, kind of going against the grain a little bit. I know they were terrible last week. I get it. You've got the Toledo insight. You've got the Florida insight. One question I have, do you think Florida will play hard for Billy Napier this week? Ooh. I hope so, man. <laughs> oh. See that now? He's dead inside. Oh my god! god. He's he's dead inside. Was that a good question? Jonathan, you don't question. get this. I'm a Gators fan and a Giants fan. Please, I, I, I am God's is... toughest soldier out here. Do you, you also like the Washington Generals? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. There were many you know, weeks somebody out there that's a, a, a Gators Tennessee fan, times, a Panthers man. fan, so they probably have it a little bit worse than you. You know what I mean? With it being so close, but you're you're close, brother. Here you're close. You know what? You're falling off the cliff. You're edging towards it. This reminds me of, you know, I mean, I've seen it several times, but the latest version is when Auburn had Brian Harson and like all the fans I know, I live kind of near Auburn and all the fans were talking, you know, about the new coach. And it was almost like they would show up on Saturday and go, wait a minute, we haven't fired him yet. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's the way it is with Bailey Napier. It's like fans keep going to see him like, OK, let's talk about the new coach. Oh, my God, he's still here. How'd that happen? Real quick yeah. show, man. So we all taking Florida to beat Mississippi State. Yeah. I am scared. Scared money doesn't oh, make money. Up, yes. <laughs> I'll take the they, six they points. Mississippi State I'll take this the week. six points. I will. I'll take the six points with Mississippi right, John State. John Miller. I see you. We got it. We got to get to this other game real quick because this is a big one. It is Arkansas at Auburn, and man, Arkansas. The offense looks great. Bobby Petrino and Taylor Green, Jaquindon Jackson, all that's looking great. Andrew Armstrong, Auburn. They make the quarterback switch. It looked great. You know, Hank Brown, but it was New Mexico. Four touchdown passes. But we know how bad Peyton Thorne was two weeks ago. How do we feel about Auburn? They're at home, three-point favorite. This is a big game for them. I'd actually like to point out that the first episode of the SEC squad, Zach and I got into about a Graham Mertz and Peyton Thorne. <laughs> and lo and behold, they both suck. Um, <laughs> who would have thought? Uh, I'm taking Auburn in that one. Uh, I'm riding with Hank Brown, friend of Locked On Auburn, until, they, until he gives me a reason not to. I don't I don't know who to pick in that game. I would think Auburn because they're at home, but I, I tell you what the lock of the week for me, and I haven't even seen the number, is is the over in this game. It, like whatever that is, I, I feel like you hammer it because th- it is gonna this is the drunkest game every single year in the SEC. It is it is maction on a Saturday in the SEC. It's just maction with a southern draw, and I cannot wait. This is the drunkest Arkansas team I've ever seen, by the way. They're super yeah. high variance. But isn't Arkansas A and M drunker usually? That's also fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think yeah, Arkansas has a drinking problem. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I, you know what? I, I think Auburn will win because that, that's the way I, I, I always think, and it only makes me feel better when they lose. Um, but I think Auburn will win. Um, that said, you know, boy, what kind of story would it be if Petrino rolled in there as an assistant Man. again this time and was able to pull off a victory? And look, and Hank Brown looked really good. His passes look really crisp. I mean, I don't think there's any other way to say that. He dropped some in there uh, on a dime occasionally, but that is a pretty bad defense he was playing against last week. And Oklahoma State has gone, I mean, excuse me, Arkansas has gone to Oklahoma State and they fared pretty well, except mm-hmm. for about the last 10 minutes. I was going to say, I mean, it feels like it, and that's the game I watch. So, like, I'm not trying to act like an expert on Arkansas, but feels like they have more playmakers. They have more explosion than, than that of Auburn. If they don't try to just say, hey, football, here, go go right. win. other go Oklahoma State, go win the football game. Like, they tried so hard to lose that game to Arkansas. I and mean, as long as you don't beat yourself like that, I mean, it feels like they got a pretty good chance to score some points. Yeah, my only analysis for this game is former Texas quarterback Jaquindon Jackson turned Utah running back, turned Arkansas running back, right? Gotta love college football. Goes <laughs> off in this game, and Arkansas gets a big win for them, I guess, against Auburn. So yeah, that's my only analysis. Arkansas gets the win. And Lane the question Jackson is – good too, because that's a bad offensive line for, for all yeah. of them as well. He's been a little yeah. slow to get going too. Mm-hmm. And Hank Brown, he might come back to the last white week might have been a mirage. That's, that's what I'm worried. That's yeah. what I'm worried about for Auburn. They bought into the Hank Brown after Peyton Thorne was terrible. And this feels like it's set up for Hank Brown to be awful. And Peyton Thorne comes in with a Superman cape to go, I'm here to save the freaking day. And oh, everybody's going like, oh, this no. isn't going to be two and Jalen, y'all. I don't think it can be like that. I mean, <laughs> oh, Hank Brown on. for Heisman. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, Hank instead of Link. That's my favorite thing. I've Why didn't Auburn go get a quarterback this offseason? I need I need Peyton Thorne to save the game against Arkansas more than I need. Yes. That, that's what I need at this point. Yeah. No, 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 no. You need Peyton Thorne to come in and almost save the game. That's what will really get them talking. <laughs> like, almost do it. Yeah. That's what will be the best. Oof. Man, we're creating a lot of scenarios here. But, guys, as we wrap up here, I was going to ask who's on upset alert. There's not really – everybody else is kind of playing junk. I mean, LSU maybe it's gets Texas. to LA, but, like, <laughs> do you think – you really think General Booty is going to outplay Arch? You don't – listen, you don't mess around in your first year with a new head coach or the first year in a new conference with Louisiana Monroe. That's a <laughs> world beater of a team at times. True. And people don't forget. So that's all I'm saying, Jonathan. Don't – don't don't count your chickens for the hatch or whatever the the uh, the saying is. Yeah, yeah. I think the only question about this game is if Texas covers the forty four and a half point spread. <laughs> but I appreciate Chris Marler. You know what I'm saying? You. you know, they say the best thing about podcast hosts is being able to invoke emotion. You know, so maybe he pissed off two or three <laughs> Texas fans still watching this late into the show. I'm gonna give you guys a few sneak wounds real quick. I think Vandy keeps it close with Mizzou for a while. Oh John my Miller. God, are you on this like every week with Gordy? He's just think, every week he picks us. Oh, go ahead, do your do your best. I think go ahead. Bowling Green keeps it close at A and M. Bowling Green, no, I watched a no, couple. No. I think their offense can no, stay close. I, by the way, I like Marcel Reed. I think yeah, Marcel, yeah, yeah, yeah he's good there. Yeah, it's a good athlete. No, he's not. He just no. <laughs> no. Okay, Brandon. He's not good just because he's been at Florida now. You know, he, he's not. He just, just played Florida. That's all he did. <laughs> That's it. Tennessee boy. Yeah. The other one I was yeah. going to throw out: yeah. Ohio. I think keeps it close with Kentucky. You're coming off that emotional, tough one point loss to Georgia. Everybody's like, "Hey, you're not as bad as we thought you were." Come out does with a Mark, clunker and stick. Well, that makes more sense. Does Can Mark Stoops know point? that he doesn't have to punt? Hey, yeah, Chris, I, I, Chris. I can't wait for him to punt or to go for, for a fourth and one field goal. Hey, hey, Chris, how did the officiating crew get from Columbia to Lexington so fast? They were so <laughs> I'm, I'm mad. Pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Brian uh, Brian Kelly had a PJ. And they just flew on immediately because that was, I mean, just <laughs> gift wrap. I got Gordon Tech after that game telling me that Shane Beamer blew it. I was like, buddy, that that is just on a silver platter. I mean, 17-point lead. I mean, everybody blows 17-point leads, right? I mean, come on. Shane Beamer, he did everything right. Gordy, can I ask you a, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you want to host Locked On Mac? You know, Bowling Green's going to keep it close. <laughs> Ohio's going to keep it close. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Exactly. Think of the page views. Yeah, Look, right? man, there's it been an upset. Chaos. There's been an upset in the conference every week so far. Somebody's losing this weekend. That's not supposed <laughs> to Also, I'd like to let him know that Billy Napier has not blown a 17-point lead. He doesn't get any. It's going to happen. That's going to do it, guys, as we wrap up here for another edition of the SEC squad. Appreciate you guys jumping in. We'll uh, do this again next week as the competition gets tougher. We get more SEC on SEC action, and that means the trash talk ramps up. So, hey, guys, reminder to follow and subscribe to your favorite SEC show. We'll be covering your favorite teams every day throughout the season. And don't forget, I got you covered with the entire conference uh, every day with Locked on SEC, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, covering your team every day.